The content in this presentation is covered on pages 90 through 93 of your textbook, and it's meant to help you achieve learning objective number 18, which is to describe the movement of water through the hydrologic cycle and to list and describe water's unique properties. Uh, be sure to skim those pages before watching the video. Um, and also be sure to read the chapter carefully before you attempt the, the quizzes on the Canvas site. Water is found everywhere on Earth, in the oceans, glaciers, rivers, lakes, air, soil, and living tissue. The vast majority of the water on or close to the surface, uh, over 97%, is salt water, uh, and that's in the oceans. Much of the remaining 3% is stored in ice sheets. So not, uh, not mountain glaciers, but the big ice sheets of Antarctica and Greenland. Only a meager 0.001% uh, is found in the atmosphere. And most of that is in the form of water vapor. The continuous exchange of water among the oceans, atmosphere, and continents is called the water uh, cycle or the hydrologic cycle. Water from the oceans and to a lesser extent from the land uh, evaporates into the atmosphere. Wind transports that moisture laden air over great distances until the process of cloud formation causes the water vapor to condense into tiny liquid cloud droplets. The process of cloud formation may result in precipitation. Any precipitation that falls into the ocean has already ended its cycle and is ready to begin another. The precipitation that falls over the land um, goes through a few different pathways uh, back to the ocean and the atmosphere. Some of it falls uh, on land and soaks into the ground. Uh, and some of that water moves laterally, seeping into lakes and streams. And the remainder, which flows over the surface, is called runoff. Much of the groundwater and runoff eventually returns to the atmosphere through evaporation. A smaller amount of the groundwa uh, groundwater is taken up by plants and released to the atmosphere through a process called transpiration. The total amount of water in the atmosphere remains fairly constant. Therefore, the average annual precipitation over Earth must be roughly equal to the quantity of water lost through evaporation. However, over the continents, precipitation greatly exceeds evaporation. Uh, evidence for the roughly balanced hydrologic cycle is found in the fact that the level of the world's oceans is not dropping. The continuous movement of water through the hydrologic cycle holds the key to the distribution of moisture over the surface of our planet, and it's intricately related to all atmospheric phenomena. Water has unique properties that set it apart from most other substances. For instance, water is the only liquid found at Earth's surface in large quantities. Water also is readily converted from one state of matter to another, solid, liquid, and gas, at temperatures and pressures that we experience here on Earth. A third uh, interesting fact about water is that the solid phase, ice, is less dense than the liquid phase, water. And that's why ice floats on top of water. It actually expands when, uh, when it freezes rather than uh, constricting. Uh, it expands by about 9% in volume. A fourth interesting fact is that water has a high heat capacity. And that means that changing its temperature requires a lot of energy. 
all of those properties influence Earth's weather and climate and are favorable for life as we know it. These properties are largely a consequence of water's ability to form hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are the attractive forces that exist between hydrogen atoms in one water molecule and oxygen atoms of any other water molecule. To better grasp the nature of hydrogen bonds, uh, let's look at a, a very blurry water molecule here. Uh, water molecules, uh, H2O, consist of two hydrogen atoms, the white, uh, the white balls there, um, and they are strongly bonded to the red uh, blob there, which is the oxygen atom. Because oxygen atoms have a stronger attraction to the bonding electrons in the water molecule than the hydrogen atoms do, the oxygen side gets a partial negative charge, and the hydrogen atoms give the other side a partial positive charge. Because oppositely charged particles attract, a hydrogen atom on one water molecule is attracted to an oxygen atom on another water molecule. Hydrogen bonds hold water molecules together to form the solid that we call ice. In ice, hydrogen bonds produce a rigid hexagonal network. The resulting molecular configuration is very open, so there are a lot of empty spaces. When ice is heated sufficiently, it melts. A melting causes some, but not all, of the hydrogen bonds to break. As a result, the water molecules in liquid water display a more compact arrangement. This explains why water in its liquid phase is denser than it is in the solid phase. That phenomenon has far-reaching effects for Earth's surfaces uh, processes in general, and, and especially for weather. When ice forms on a water body, it insulates the underlying liquid and slows the rate of freezing at depth. If a water body froze from the bottom, imagine the consequences. Many lakes would freeze solid during the winter, killing the aquatic life. In addition, deep bodies of water such as the Arctic Ocean would never be ice covered. And that would alter Earth's energy budget, which in turn would modify global atmospheric and oceanic circulations. So water's heat capacity is also related to hydrogen bonding. Uh, when water is heated, some of the energy is used to break hydrogen bonds rather than to increase the molecular motion. So under similar conditions, water heats up and cools down more slowly than most other common substances. So as a result, large water bodies tend to moderate temperatures by remaining warmer than the adjacent land masses in winter and cooler than those land masses in the summertime. Use the course content provided on the Canvas site as well as outside internet sources in the textbook to verify that you can formulate answers to questions like these. If you can comfortably answer these questions, you're in great shape. If you can't, review the textbook, rewatch the video, and see if your abilities improve. If you're still completely stumped, start a discussion on the Canvas site or ask me for help.